real fucking good my name is bill max i'm your director of fun and games for the evening joining me tonight the one and only jp zapata joining us a little later will be charlie o'connor as we celebrate a huge flyers win two to one down in sunrise over the nhl's number one team this show of course is brought to you by our friends at mortgage cs check out mortgagecs.com slash phly to start your home buying process today company nmls id number one four six four seven six six i'll tell you a little bit more about them later but right now all i want to talk about is our philadelphia flyers that's now two wins in a month over the florida panthers in their barn they've held them the one goal in each game you say okay best team in the east best team in the league leading the president's trophy race what about out west they've played vancouver the number two team in the league number two number one team in the west played them twice beat them twice held them to one goal in two games why not us baby i am absolutely <laughs> jacked up right now first thing i'm gonna ask charlie when he joins is Danny buying tomorrow? Because I sure as shit would. <laughs> JP, what's your first impression of that game? Wow, what a freaking performance that was. That was a fun hockey game, I will say. And it's funny because we're also talking about 2000s like, in Florida, <laughs> which is absolutely wild. But what a great throwback game. It was physical as all hell, and the, the Flyers got ahead of the Panthers. That That's throwback hockey right there. But no, I mean, after the emotions for the past couple of days with the trade of Sean Walker... I don't know about you, but I was questioning how this team would actually respond. And Bill, they responded. They responded and then some. Sean Walker, he's in Colorado now. All the luck in the world to you, my friend. Nick Sealer, he's out hurt. Rasmus Ristolainen, he's out hurt. Jamie Drysdale, he's out hurt. Cam York got hurt, came back in the third period. This is a team with a depleted blue line. Igor Zamula, one of the, like... Closer to NHL caliber defenseman on this blue line tonight with Mark Stahl out there, with Ronnie Adder out there, with Adam Ginning out there. And they went into Florida and took it to the best team in the NHL. They played their game. They got fucking physical with them. Adam Ginning, what a debut for this season for that kid. Huge hit, few nice defensive plays. Ronnie Adder looked adequate as well. I am liking what I am seeing out of this team, and I am excited after a huge win. I know last couple days with the trade deadline, we've kind of taken a step back from the playoff race and said, it's all about the future, man. It's about, yeah, let's get that first-round pick for Sean Walker. All right, let's broker a deal in that Noah Hannafin trade, bring in a little bit of uh, extra ammunition, a fifth-round pick. You know, a lot of things going on around this trade deadline right now. But let us not forget the team on the ice that every time they've been challenged this year, every time they've hit an obstacle, they've responded and they've responded huge, and that's exactly what we saw tonight. You know what's funny, Bill, is the other day I went down a little YouTube rabbit hole. And I was watching the old Blue Jackets Lightning series back in 2019, and I watched John Tortorella right before game one talk to his team and talking about the mindset of the playoffs and how, listen, it doesn't matter about skill. What matters is the toughness and the mindset on the ice. And I just watched his team play. And, dude, they are ready for the playoffs. You know, Danny Barrier talked about in the presser, too. They are gearing up for the playoffs. I mean, Bill, they went toe-to-toe with the best team, in the, one of the best teams in the NHL, if not the best, and they won this game, and they played them at their game in their own barnyard as well, as we got some Super Chats. We have in a here. few Super Chats, first from JQ. Uh, taking a break from the What Chaos stream to tune in, <laughs> go Flyers. Yeah, man, uh, shout-out to... Uh, 
to Bean and Blackburn doing the 24-hour YouTube <laughs> trade deadline stream. Uh, you can take a little break from that to watch us here as we celebrate a huge win with the trade deadline at 3 p.m. tomorrow. We'll be live for it from 2 to 4. Uh, you can join us. You can join us live at the Chegg. I'll tell you about that a little bit later. But, hey. yeah, that's been awesome. And from uh, Daft Digit, Bill, <laughs> if they win the Stanley Cup, you need to wear a dog furry Bill's costume. Bill's going to climb a pole with that costume. I will. <laughs> if the Flyers win the Stanley Cup. I said, like, in the first period tonight, if the Flyers win this game, I'm going to bet them to win the East. And now I guess I have to. I don't want to go back on my word. But I'm just, listen, I, I know that there are better teams in the East. I know there are better teams in the league than the Flyers. But there's just something to be said about a team that can't be denied. And that's what we're seeing right now. It's fucking special right yeah. now. Yeah, And I mean, I think like what's the best part about all this bill is that our expectations have been exceeding <laughs> because going into, <laughs> going into the season, I'm sorry, but I didn't mean to do that. To no, you. That's, <laughs> as I spit beer all over, no, that all over my laptop and everything. That's that ice cold Coors Light, man. The mountains are real, real blue. I can't wait till the Philly show tomorrow walks in like, <laughs> smells like beer. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's – listen, man, that's the expectations – you made me laugh, man. Uh, the expectations coming into this season were in the gutter. My Literally. expectations were at best a bottom 10 team, maybe a bottom 5 hockey. team. That's all I wanted to We're see. not only seeing good hockey. We're seeing winning hockey. Yeah. This isn't just a, oh, yeah, they, you know, they're a run-and-gun team and they lose every game 5-4. That's fun. They win games no matter the style. Uh, another 2-1 win. They've beaten the Panthers 2-1 in Florida – twice in a month, you go down there, and I know it's not like the toughest barn to play in, but they've also won six in a row there, and they're only, their last two losses, both to the Flyers in Florida, I'm, there's just beer everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's going to cut that, and that's going to be like a clip. Uh, but I'm viral. just so freaking proud of what I saw out of this team tonight, to go in and be as physical as them, to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Panthers, I'm pumped, man. I, yeah. I don't know how else to put it. No, no, no. I mean, like, you talk about the way they play. I mean, Bill, I mean, that's Philadelphia and the way they play every single night. And I, I kind of want to throw some roses to this third line. I mean, we don't give them enough love, but, dude, like, they are the most consistent line on a night-to-night -night basis. I mean, Garnet Hathaway is making me chuckle on a night-to-night -night basis, just being a little, little J.O. at times out there. It's so fun to watch. But, I mean, obviously, they got the game winner there, and that's why they deserve the roses here tonight. But... They just do the little things right, whether it be the four checking or just doing the dirty work. And it's funny because, you know, we have Noah Cates here. We're wondering if he's going to explode offensively. Heck, these guys together, they're fine just as a unit. So they deserve some love here tonight because they were huge again. And that's after the first period. In the first period, I thought the Flyers' first half of the first period looked all right. They were, they were hanging with them. I thought they were holding their own pretty well. Didn't know what to expect, especially out of this blue line. It's also TK's first game back in a while. Yeah. You know, he's going to mix it up, but first game in a little bit. He's coming back from injury. You wait and see. Panthers took over in the second half of the first period, and it was like, we just yeah. need an answer. Just need an answer. And Hathaway gets that winner in the third, but right away, right off, uh, right off the bat in the second period, 10 seconds in, it's that line, Ryan Paling. Uh, the defensemen get the assists, but you know, win the draw back, defensemen get it up, Paling comes in, shelves it right over Bobrovsky on the short side. That gets things started. Uh, the Panthers tie it up late in the period, but it's uh, – that line, like you're saying, is – uh, yeah, they need offense out of the big guns. Uh, like TK's back now. Hopefully he gets going. For One sure. of my questions halfway through this game was where the hell's Owen Tippett? He made a couple plays late uh, after he was invisible. Uh, but that group right there is kind of the heart and soul of this team. Yeah. And I realize they need high-end talent, man. They don't have that. Uh, when, you know, what was it? Last game we talked, and it was like, I need more than the only goal to be, you know, Lawton basically standing in the net. Uh, to deflect a paling centering pass is the and this one it's paling gets the first goal Hathaway gets the winner like yeah they need their top end offensive guys that they do have to step up Sean Couturier has to get going he looked a little more like himself tonight yeah but to have a line like this that can go in it gives you a little bit of hope in a uh, in a potential playoff series I know that the Carolina Hurricanes are probably or just got Jake Gensel I don't know if it's done yet and that's who they would match yeah. up with right now but I see a line like this, and it's built for playoff hockey. For sure. You just see the way they get in in the forecheck. The Flyers are not a good forechecking team. 
That's their weakness, getting in and establishing possession in the offensive zone and getting one, two, three cracks at it. They, they're so good at this. Yeah. And they are a lot of fun to watch, too, because they're physical and they don't give a fuck. Yeah, and Torch put them out there first to start off the night there. And just keep in mind, too, I mean, like, Florida Panthers are a really good team for a reason. They are super hard to score on, whether it be there's just a defensive structure or just Bob being Bob on a night-to-night basis. And there was a lot of moments where it was like, yep, that's Bob. And I loved, you know, we also love seeing Boosh throwing it back to when, <laughs> you know, young Bob and they were in the same room together. But, no, I mean, this line, is it, it, you talk about making some noise in a playoff series. I mean, this is the engine. And, obviously, we need the other guns to go as well. They do, but when they're not, it's great to get that depth scoring. That's what wins you games in the playoffs. I always say, like, in the playoffs, yeah, y- your big guns are going to have to get it done. But a lot of times, you know who you're up against? Another team with a really good top line. Probably yeah. another team with a really good second line. It's your depth that will, in the third, fourth, fifth, sixth game of a series, if they come through a little bit more than the other one, you have a damn good chance, even against teams with that with the better top-end talent. And I think... I'm not saying the Flyers are going to win the Cup. I'm not saying they even have a great chance against Carolina in the first round. But they keep beating the odds, man. Like, look at the teams that they have at least gone toe-to-toe with, if not beaten throughout this season. I mentioned right off, this is the second time they beat Florida. They're 2-0 against Florida. They're 2-0 against Vancouver. They've beaten Vegas. They also almost took Vegas to overtime once. They've beaten Colorado. They got their asses kicked by them once, but they also (laughs) beat them. They beat Tampa once. Like They have beaten so many good teams this year. It's really hard to discount. I I don't know if it's we need to give Sam Harrison the Calder Trophy. We need to give uh, John Tortorella the Jack Adams. I think he should win it just based on tonight. Tonight, his Jack Adams odds should plummet. If you don't have him already, get him now after that win because this team's going to the playoffs, man. I don't care how hot the Islanders are. If they put out the effort that we saw tonight, they're going to beat a lot of teams. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I mean, what, 33 wins now in in regulation. I mean, it's it's for a reason. I mean, I I just genuinely don't know if there's another coach in here that would get the most out of this team just the way John Tortorella has. And, you know, there was a lot of criticism at the end of last year when he didn't, you know, wasn't on the bench for a lot of those games and he was analyzing. I mean, he clearly analyzed enough and he knew exactly what to do going into the season, how to get this team ready. But it, it, it's just fun watching this team play on a night-to-night basis. And I just say, like, as a fan, like, just enjoy this. Like, we didn't expect to be here at this time period. And this is a lot of freaking fun. So I don't care what happens in the playoffs. Like, this is, like, the one moment in Philly sports where you could just, like, relax and watch a game without having to stress out because the expectation shouldn't be stealing cup. The expectation should just be going there and giving it a series. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, though, I, I know we're playing with house money a little, <laughs> uh, but – I was not relaxed tonight. That third oh, period, you, when I, when you can't, you uh, can't. when Hathaway gets that winner, you just scream, fuck yes. Oh, yeah. And that's exactly what I tweeted. That was an exact <laughs> quote from JP Zapata right there. <laughs> uh, like, it was, that's how I'm feeling about this team. Because after, it's a joy, you man. said it right away. You just don't know. They've been resilient all year. Every time something's happened, they come back, they win again. Like, okay, they've lost a couple in a row. How are they going to respond? But... If the last couple days weren't a kick in the balls, man. Like, okay, Sean Walker, he's been maybe our most effective overall defenseman. He was the anchor of the best pair. He just got traded. Oh, his partner? Yeah, he's out. We don't know how long. They're saying it's not going to be long, but, you know, they said the same thing about Rasmus versus the and <laughs> No one's seen him. Uh, people have seen him, I think. It's just like, you know. Uh they go in tonight and they do that. I'm so excited. I got to tell, but, I got to, oh, go ahead. Go but, ahead. No, by the way, you know, no Nick Sealer, the block King. I mean, still 21 block shots for this Flyers team. They didn't miss a beat. That's, we have to give it to, uh, I think we got to give a little love to Cam York. 15 yeah, block shots in his last three games. He leaves the ice with seven minutes left around there in the third period after blocking a shot. And I was just, well, well, who's left? Like, I guess they're going to have to call up Emil Andre, but that doesn't fix like, today where they barely have any NHL defenseman in the lineup. He's our top pair guy. He comes back. He's out there. He's toughing it out. And that's just another, it's another one of those reasons. I may not have agreed at the start of the year with the way they were going to go about this rebuild. Me, I'm a tear it down guy. Let's try to get the top end talent. Culture might take care of itself if you get great players, but playing these meaningful games does matter. Cam York goes down the tunnel are you hurt or are you injured? I'm just hurt. I'm good. Gets his ass back out there. 
That's fucking huge, man. That's culture, Bill. All right, I got to uh, I got to calm down for a second so I can tell you about our friends over at Mortgage CS. Listen, the spring purchase market is almost here and heating up quickly. Many clients, especially first-time home buyers, they're reaching out and they want to be ready when the rates drop. It's what everyone's doing. Oh, yeah, not right now, but real soon when these rates start to come down, I want to be able to get in in a home. You know what that means? There's going to be limited inventory and strong demand, so competition will remain extremely fierce for throughout the year. So you got to get in touch with Mortgage CS to prepare and ensure you will be able to stand out and make the strongest offer possible when the time is right for you. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or you're looking to refinance, or you just want to know what you have to do to qualify for a mortgage when that time is right, Mortgage CS should be a consideration no matter your situation. There are a plethora of mortgage brokers out there. Many of them will promise the best rates and tell you whatever you want to hear to get you to sign on the dotted line. But the reason you should consider Mortgage CS is they're honest, good people, and always work hard to not let their clients down. But don't take it from me. Check out their reviews on Google. Spoiler, their average is five stars. The limit is five. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at their most recent review from a few weeks ago. It reads, there's good reason that Mortgage CS gets all five-star ratings from their clients. Ben and his team are the most professional, courteous, knowledgeable, well-organized, helpful, fair, and well-connected team that you will ever come across. Couldn't be happier with how they manage to get our complicated deal closed despite very tight timeline. Highly recommend. Is this not what I've been telling you for months about Mortgage CS and the team? When you hear the word mortgage, think of Mortgage CS. Think of Ben and Alec. Save Ben's telephone number right now. It's on the screen if you're listening on pod, 267-391-7425. Save it to your phone or email Ben at ben at mortgagecs.com. Call or text anytime, day or night. And if you're not in the home buying market, if you're good, maybe down the line but not right yet, talk some Philly sports. Say, Ben, I'm feeling this playoff run. See what he has to say. I bet you he answers. <laughs> and check out mortgagecs.com slash PHLY to get started today. This advertisement is not a commitment to lend or extend credit. Mortgage CS is an equal housing opportunity mortgage broker. All loans are subject to credit approval. Certain restrictions may apply. Company NMLS ID number 1464766. All right. So just taking a look here at the playoff race uh, as I look okay. for where I had the standings. Flyers now at 74 points with 18 games remaining. The Islanders, I do not believe that game has started yet. I think they're at the Sharks. The uh, Penguins got their asses kicked by the Caps tonight. They're done. That that body's wow. cold. Is it six nothing. Yeah, uh, Gensel is you know on his way out. That thing's over. It's maybe the Caps can make a push here, mm -hmm. uh, but I just really do not believe in them. I think it's the Flyers and Isles for this third spot in the uh, in the Metro Division. And you also have to look at that wild card. Even if the Islanders are to catch the Flyers, I know we've kind of been like, oh, five Atlantic teams are going to get in the playoffs all year. Tampa, 72 points in 64 games. Flyers, 74 and 64. They're ahead of them in the standings. And they're uh, two points up with uh, on Detroit, although Detroit has two games in hand, so they're a little bit up in terms of uh, points percentage. But uh, this race, man, it's... I am now going from, yeah, it's, uh, it's been nice, but I think they're going to fall off. After tonight, why would I think that? If they were ever going to lay an egg, it was tonight. Like, that locker room, what they've been through in the last couple days, like, seeing guys go, all the rumors, everything. Nah, it's all good. I mean, look, let me, I, the only thing that really does concern me, I, I think the Flyers will take care of business going forward, but, like, the Islanders. Like, I know Patrick Waugh's got these guys playing more physical, but, like, do they really scare us? Like, do they genuinely? Because, like, I, for me personally, like, I, I, they don't scare me, so, like, I, I feel like they're fine in the spot they're at. Obviously, that doesn't mean relax. they got to keep this foot on the gas pedal and, more importantly, get that mind right for the playoffs. But the Islanders don't threat, scare me at all, so I feel comfortable where we're at at the moment. Yeah, with, um, I mean, with Sorokin and with Varlamov, it's always you can outplay them all you want. You might, you, you might just not score. Yeah. And we saw that earlier this season where the Flyers, they played some tight games with the Isles, even though they vastly outplayed them. Now with Patrick Waugh, Maybe they have a little bit of that boost. It really looks like they're coming on. They've won some tough games recently. But why am I going to discount the Flyers now? There's yeah. 18 games left. Like, they've been this good all year. 
Yeah. I think they can close it because they have something in them that just every time, every time things get tough, they get tougher. Yeah. And I know we're being superlative. I know we're being over the top. But this was such a big fucking win tonight. That no, third period was. That third period felt like playoff hockey. Seriously. And you know what the Flyers were? Better than the best team in the league in a playoff like atmosphere tonight. I don't know what else you can ask from them. In their own barnyard, short short handlers we talked about, especially on that blue line. It felt like every all the odds were against the Flyers, and that's like what's so awesome about this team. Like, feels like at times when things are against them, something is some bright light appears. Whether it be you know, like you look at all the crap that we dealt with, Cutter Gauthier trades, right, injuries with this team, and yet Danny Breer finds some nice moves with this team, and this team on the ice looks really good. I mean, I, I don't know where to go from here, but. So keep in mind, going forward, March 24th is that next Florida Panthers game. Dude, I don't know what it is. We play really well against them. And then... They're matching. They defend very well against what the Flyers do. They're very opposite, but mentally they're similar teams. That and I think true. that's why they... Like, the Flyers are a rush offense. They're trying to get shit going. And the Panthers are, we're going to beat the shit out of you down low. Good luck breaking out. And that was an issue for the Flyers at times tonight. Sam Harrison was huge when they did establish that possession. Only gives up the one goal on 30 shots tonight. But I got to give it to the defense. That's where I want to go with this next. Okay. Um, very, very happy to see the ice time distribution tonight. We talk about, I thought this was going to be, yeah, Sanheim and York, y'all are playing 30 minutes, yeah. you know, like, and Zamula, you're going to play your your 20, and we're going to probably use Stahl in a top four role, and Adder and Jinning, we're going to try to mix them in. That is not how it went. Stahl was the six tonight, played under 17 minutes. Right. Jinning played 18-13, Adder played 17-48. Uh, Adder was uh, an even. Jinning was a minus one. Had one of the biggest hits I've seen from a flyer this season <laughs> in the neutral zone. That dude that can awesome. lay the body. He made some defensive plays tonight. I want to see Adder be a little more accurate with his shot. Only got one on goal, uh, but he was letting it fly, and that thing's a bomb. This is just another. I know there may they might be looking for a veteran defenseman to kind of fill a hole here because can you get by with stall? You don't know when Sealer's going to be back. Risto and Drysdale are up in the air. This is an awesome test for these kids, and so far, I'm liking what I'm saying. And look, I know the win is awesome, but to see like two kids come up here against the top team in the East here, that's that is something to smile about as well. Adder and Jennings look like NHL veterans out there, and obviously, like they've had some NHL experience, but to come up here in this type of situation is not easy whatsoever for them to make the difference that they did. I mean, that Jennings hit on Reinhardt, dude. The, that was a momentum change, like. The Flyers took over from there. Yeah. That's when they won the game in my mind. And this is Jennings second NHL game. Right. Uh, he played 1640 in the second to last game of the season against Columbus last year. Uh, two hits, two blocks, two penalty minutes, no points. And added, he got 15 games at the end of 2021, 22 played two games last year, averaged under 17 minutes. They come into a, Tough situation, a beaten up blue line, and they're leaned on tonight. They came up, they answered the bell, man, and that's all you can ask a couple of kids with a combined, what, 15, 16, 7, 18 games of NHL experience between them. Bill, who said Torts doesn't like the kids? <laughs> who said Torts doesn't like the kids? <laughs> when you have to, you do it, and he did it tonight. And they stepped up big, and that does that's how you get ice time right there, by your play, and I think Torts proved that too, and they got their minutes here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And now uh, we got to go. We got to go down to sunrise. We got to see our buddy on spring break, uh, Charlie O'Connor, joining us from the arena after what I am calling the biggest win of the Flyers season. Charlie O'Connor, how are you doing tonight, my friend? Okay. Um, I am having some trouble hearing you guys. Okay. Um, I, was hearing you, I was hearing you guys fine until I got put in, and now I'm having trouble. Um, so I'm just going to roll with it. I don't know exactly what you asked, but I'm going to say that this was an unbelievably gutsy win by the Flyers. And to me, this was a win. And a, quite a few of the players we talked to after the game didn't quite come out and say it. But they more or less came out and said it, that this was them more or less trying to tell everyone that, like, just because we're selling doesn't mean we're going anywhere. I think this was an important statement game for the group, for the players, because they weren't happy that Sean Walker got traded, even though people like us might look at that trade and say, that's the smart thing. 
They're looking to the future. They're sticking to the rebuild. The Flyers players want to win. They think they can win it all because, of course, they do. They're hockey players that think if they play well, they can beat anybody, and that's exactly the way they should think. They watch the team make a trade of one of their better defensemen when they're already injury-ravaged on defense. There are some teams that would have just not packed it in, but just been so demoralized by the fact that they aren't getting any support from their front office. Their front office is clearly still believing that this team isn't ready to compete for a cup. They might have gotten blown out 5 5 nothing tonight. This was the kind of game where you could. You're starting a rookie defense pair that just got called up. You're on the road against the best team in the NHL. You just traded away one of your best defensemen. This easily could have been a disaster. Instead, those guys went out there and they played hard. First period, I thought they got outplayed. Second two periods, I thought they were the better team. And they come out with a dramatic win. But even if they would have lost this game in overtime or in a shootout, I still would have came away really, really impressed with our effort. Uh, Can you hear me, Charlie? Do you have me at all? Yeah, I can hear you now. I don't know why when I came in. I could hear you a little bit, but it was very muffled, and I couldn't actually hear what you were saying. Now I can hear you fine. All right. Uh, Absolutely beautiful. Um, I want to start. I guess I got to start with Sam Harrison after what was, I mean, 29 saves on 30 shots. They've now beaten the Florida Panthers twice in a month, two to one. I I don't even know if I have a question. Just is Sam Harrison really this good? Like, did did they stumble upon a number one goalie despite what has happened with the number one goalie position this season to this team? You know what? If if they did stumble upon Sam Harrison as a legitimately above average number one goalie, it's about friggin' time this organization got some good luck. I'm going to just say it right now. Given the amount of bad luck and misfortune that this organization has dealt with the last three, four years, you know, starting with friggin' Oscar Limblom getting diagnosed with cancer. Like, yeah, you know what? The hockey gods should throw them a bone and have their fifth round goalie prospect become an above average NHL starter. The one thing about Arison, and this was, I thought, a really interesting, not interesting, but just eye opening quote from John Tortorella after the game when we asked him about Sam Arison. I don't know the exact wording, but he more or less said, this is just who he is. You know, going into Florida against one of the better teams, if not the best team in hockey twice in a month and beating them both times at this point i'm j- i just expect it from him i think that's more or less what he was getting at and yeah I-, I think he is legitimately a really good starting nhl goalie and he was great tonight i mean that first period they could have been down two nothing or three nothing they really could have they got outplayed in that period florida looked every bit as good of a team as we know they are in the first period that first period ends zero zero for one reason his name is sam harrison then the team gets going but Harrison still kept having to make tough saves. I mean, he made quite a few really big saves over the final two periods as well. It's just that game could have gotten out of hand in the first period. He made sure it didn't. And then he kept up his strong play the rest of the game. Harrison was fantastic. He's probably the biggest reason why they win this game. And again, I think the Flyers are just at the point where they kind of expect it from. Did you, um, I know you were there, so you didn't see the broadcast, but on the broadcast tonight, uh, Bush sets up uh, talking about Bob Rovsky and that first game against the Penguins where he uh, where he won and it's you know his rookie debut and I think about stumbling into a number one you got to appreciate that poetry a little bit with the one who got away that they kind of just stumbled into <laughs> loses to the next one that maybe they found I don't know that's it's not a question I just thought maybe you'd appreciate that poetry JP. What's up, Charlie? How are you tonight? Let's let's talk a little bit about the third line. I want to throw some roses to them because obviously not only did, were they on the ice for the game winner with Hathaway, but between Hathaway, Palin, and Cates, they've been so consistent as of late. I mean, how good are we? Are we just getting way too excited? But how good are they, Charlie? They're playing really well. Look, I, I don't think as excited as you sound about this line, you are not nearly as excited as John Tortorella <laughs> is when he cool. thinks of that line. Like, he just loves them. They pl- they they are like the platonic ideal of John of what John Tortorella thinks hockey should be. Like they are. They're they're not super skilled, but they just work hard you to death. Like that it, they just it's not even like they outwork you. Of course they outwork you, but it's just like it's all friggin' effort with that crew. And then you got a guy like Cates who legitimately has like very high end hockey IQ, 
doesn't necessarily have the puck skills, I think, to be more than just a really good middle to bottom of the lineup guy. But from a hockey IQ standpoint, I put him up against anybody on this team other than maybe Sean Couturier. He is a smart friggin' hockey player. And then you add in Paling speed, which he showed on his goal. I mean, he just torched a really fast team in Florida. I mean, he left them flat footed. He can fly. And then you got Hathaway, who just is like he is everything traditionalists want a Flyers player to be, except for that he's actually also good at hockey. I, I wanted to ask about uh, Hathaway next because, man, you said to start the year, as soon as they signed him in the offseason, you were like, this dude's just fun to watch. And yeah, fuck if he isn't, man. Like, I, again, <laughs> I don't even know if I have a question. I just, that dude's a maniac. He is the exact guy, and that line might be the exact line you need to win you a playoff series, especially against a team like the Panthers that want to bully you. That line just wouldn't let them be bullied tonight. Not I was really all. happy about that. But since we covered them, let's go to uh, let's go to Coots, man. Sean Couturier, he's been struggling. We all know, you know, he gets the C and then immediately basically gets demoted to the fourth line. Uh, it's It's been rough going for Sean Couturier. Now, he doesn't show up on the score sheet tonight, but I thought he looked considerably better, made some defensive plays early in the game, had some power moves down low, looked like his uh, responsibilities got boosted back up tonight. What did you see out of Coots? I, I thought this was Sean Couturier's best game in weeks. I, I thought he was back to looking like the guy the Flyers need him to be if they're going to survive this 10-game gauntlet where they're against basically every single good Eastern Conference team over a two-and-a-half-week span. Look, I wondered how long John Tortorella was going to hold to this Katuri on the fourth line thing. Not because he was playing great, because he wasn't, but because if you're going to match up against teams like Florida, you're going to need Sean Couturier to be getting matchups against guys like Matthew Kachuk against guys like Barkoff, you know, against Matthews and Panarin and all, all the guys that they're going to be playing over the next couple of weeks and Kucherov in two days. Sean Gattari was back right at the top of the ice time charts for this game, third on the, on the team among forwards in minutes with 17-16, behind only Konechny, who in his first game back, back leading the team, were clearly not using kick gloves on him after missing time, but he was behind connecting and tip. It was really functionally back to being the one C. Now, part of that I suspect is because Scott Lawton is battling. Um, I don't know exactly what he's, his sickness is, but he's battling something. So I think that's probably why they pull back on his ice time a little bit, but I don't think John Tortorella would have given Couturier the ice time if he wasn't impressed with what he saw in him in like the first couple period or the, the first couple shifts, the first period. It just seemed like Tort saw something. And he's like, OK, I'm giving Coots back his old responsibilities. And while he didn't score, he didn't get a point in this game. I thought by the eye test, he was stellar. Um, and I also can tell you that by the numbers, by the underlying numbers, by advanced metrics, he was really good looking at the um, at the expected goals for uh, shares at five on five. He led all flyers forwards with a seventy four point two eight percent expected goals for share. That's Sean Couturier. Sean Gutierrez has always been a play driver. Over the last few weeks, he's been less so of one. This game, even though he's getting tough matchups, you know, he faced off against the Verhage, Kachuk, Bennett line primarily. Look, this team has a couple good lines, but that is not a line lacking for firepower. Couturier control play against them. He control play against everybody. This is, it won't be the main story coming out of this game because obviously he didn't get a point. He didn't get a goal. They win in dramatic fashion. They just traded Sean Walker. They still go into sunrise and beat the top team in the, in the NHL standings. But this might have been the most positive development of the game because they're going to need Sean Couturier close to peak powers if they're going to survive this two-week run. And tonight they got Sean Couturier close to peak powers. Hey, Charlie, obviously a great performance by the team, but kind of getting thrown under the rug was the return of TK, and he looks solid to start off. What would you think of TK's return here? Yeah, I thought TK looked like TK. His his first shift, he's flying around. He tries to lay a hit, mostly miss, but it just showed that he's healthy. And I kind of had a suspicion that they were not treating him with kid gloves, but my guess is it's some type of muscle pull, like an oblique or something like that. And those are tricky injuries. And I just got the sense that they were really going to make sure he was healthy before bringing him back because they were afraid if they rushed him back, then he tweaks it even further Then he's out for the rest of the season. So they wanted to make sure that there was very little re-injury risk before they brought him back in. I thought tonight, you know, was he 
the best version of Travis Konechny? No, because he's probably a little rusty. But I thought physically he looked like Travis Konechny. The Flyers did not hesitate to give him the most minutes out of any forward on the team. So clearly John Tortorella thought he was healthy. And again, this is a really good sign for the upcoming slate of games because just like they're going to need Sean Couturier playing close to Sean Couturier, peak powers, they're going to need Travis Konechny scoring goals. He didn't score a goal tonight, but it bodes well for the next couple weeks because, again, they're going to survive this. They're going to need their best players to play like their best players. And Konechny looks like he's poised to go right back to being one of their best players, if not their best player. Charlie, I was very interested to see the, uh, the ice time distribution for the defensemen tonight. I expected it to be Sandheim and York get ready to play half the game, and then we're going to figure it out the rest. And that's not the way it went. Sandheim played 23-55, York 21-22. And Mark Stahl and actually ended up playing the fewest minutes. Jinning and Adder both played around, uh, around 18 minutes. What did you see out of the two rooks tonight? Well, I mean, I can tell you that, like, given the circumstances, they were really good because – John Tortorella mentioned this after the game. It's not like he sheltered them. You know, you're on the road. It's hard to shelter any defenseman when you're playing a road game. But they got minutes against some really good players. And they held their own. Now, it, it, it seems like I was obviously wasn't watching the game on television. Based on my mentions, it seems like, and this is just a theory, it seems like J.J. and Brian Boucher were really, really pumping Adam Jennings' tires in this game because every one of my mentions was screaming about how great Jennings was. I don't think he was great. I love the hit on Sam Reiner. That was awesome. However, he spent a lot of time in the defensive zone. He was on the ice for a goal against. By far had the worst uh, expected goals, four percentage on the team at down near 20%. I'm not especially high on Adam Jennings as a player. I don't think he's going to be a full-time NHLer. However, given the circumstances and given the fact that he was thrown in there against maybe the best team in hockey on the road, I thought he did a really good job given the circumstances. I'm not ready to coronate him as the team's new defensive defenseman who needs to be in the lineup every night. I thought he held his own. I actually thought Adder was more impressive in terms of him breaking up plays, him turning the play in the other direction. His underlying metrics actually were legitimately really good. He was up at 65% expect the goals for. He didn't have the big hit. That, that Jennings did, which was was a fun hit. I mean, I asked Jennings about it after the game, and he was basically like, look, like those kind of hits, you don't seek them out. They seek you out, and you just have to be willing to commit yourself to them. And I was feeling good, and it was a, it was a great hit. He was real happy about it, and I'm sure his teammates loved it. I can't imagine the bench wasn't going completely nuts when he blows up Sam Reiner in the neutral zone with one of those classic old-school open ice hits. Jennings, to me, held his own. Adder, to me, showed that he should probably be part of this for the rest of the season at least. I'm I continue to be more excited about Ronnie Adder's upside. Jinning, for me, I was hoping he could hold his own. He held his own and he made some legitimately good plays, which is more than I expected. I I still look at him as a guy where if the Flyers toss somebody a sixth round pick to pick up a veteran defenseman who has NHL experience, Jinning to me is the guy who goes down because I just don't think as highly of him as I think of Adder. But in this particular game, on this night, I thought both of them did as good of a job as one could have reasonably hoped they would do. Charlie, I'm just curious about just like the Flyers' mindset against the Florida Panthers here. Because obviously they've had a lot of success. Florida's been one of the best, if not the best team for most of the season. Like, what do you make of the Flyers' success against the Panthers this season? I don't think this is a situation where the Flyers, like, match up really well against the mm -hmm. Panthers. I don't think it's that. I think, if anything, it might be that the Flyers get really up to play the Panthers because they see the Panthers as a team where if we beat them, we can show all the doubters that we're for real. I do get the sense that that's a real thing for this team, that they kind of thrive off people thinking they're not that good. People have been telling them they haven't been that good since the summer. We've been telling them they haven't been that good since the summer. They love proving people wrong. And I think when you're playing a team like Florida, who everyone agrees is real frigging good, it just maybe provides that little bit of extra motivation to be like, this is a team that if we beat them, people are going to have to stand up and take us seriously. I think if anything, that might be it. And the Flyers took that personally. <laughs> they did. Um, uh, Charlie, I don't. I, I hate to even get to some of this stuff, but it is notable. So uh, prior to the game tonight, Danny Briere spoke to the media. Uh, just first, what was your biggest takeaway from that? 
Uh, well, for me, I think the biggest takeaway was the like, I, and I broke this all down in the article that I published at the second intermission on allphly.com. It's not for diehards only, it's for everybody. So check that out, even if you're not a diehard. Uh, specifically, his comments on Ryan Johansson, because they kind of telegraphed yesterday that they didn't see Johansson as going to be as part of this when they put him on waivers like two minutes after they finalized the trade. However, you look at Ryan Johansson as a player. No, he's not an $8 million a year player anymore. He's not even a $4 million a year player anymore, given the fact that every team had the chance to pick him up on waivers for nothing yesterday and no one did. So clearly he's not a $4 million player in terms of his valuation around the league. However, we're still talking about a guy who was getting 13 plus minutes a night on a cup contending team in Colorado. We're talking about a guy who has six seasons with over 60 points in his career. He's played over 900 games and he has one more year left on his contract. So if the Flyers wanted to, they could have brought him in, had him play, tried to rehabilitate his value, and then maybe shipped him off as a rental at next trade deadline. Like they clearly do need centers. You know, they they're in, in need of center depth, I think. Johansson could play wing and center. So it was kind of curious that it seemed like the Flyers right off the bat decided we don't want this guy. He's not part of this. I straight up asked Danny Briere that question when we got him an hour before puck drop in Florida. And Briere more or less confirmed, probably not. He's probably not going to be part of this, probably not part of the future plans, which from Danny Briere is as much of a, nah, he's never going to play for us ever type of, of pronouncement as you're going to get from somebody like Danny Briere. So I did some digging, and really what it seems like, based on the people I've talked to, is that they just don't think he fits the culture. I get the sense that they view him as kind of a few, a new, not, not even a new, but like he could be the next Kevin Hayes if they try to integrate him into this room where mm. Johansson plays a certain way and he's not going to change the way he plays just because John Tortorella yells at him a few times in a, uh, you know, in, in a practice or in a, in a tape study session behind closed doors. They just spent last summer excising guys like Kevin Hayes and Ivan Provorov and Tony D'Angelo, guys who they didn't think fit the culture they were trying to build. Now they feel like they have it. And the last thing they want to do is bring in a guy like that who won't, they believe or they fear, won't fully buy in the way that everyone else is. So they just don't want to be bothered with it. They look at Ryan Johansson as a guy who, hey, he helped us get a first round pick. Now, we just got to figure out a way to get rid of him. Now, whether that's trading him in the next, you know, however many hours are left until the deadline, whether that's buying him out next summer, whether that's stashing him in the minors for the next year and a half, I don't know. But it seems abundantly clear that they don't want this guy on their NHL roster. And that, to me, is an interesting little tidbit because I don't think Ryan Johansson is that good anymore, but I still think he's an NHL player. The Flyers just don't want this particular NHL player on their NHL team. And that's interesting. Yeah, I thought that was... Uh... When you asked the question and he was just like, probably not. And then said, I can't get into <laughs> why, but maybe one day it was like, maybe this one is, day. this is weird, man. Some 30 yeah. for 30, I guess. But, uh, I, 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 I don't think to be clear, I, I don't think there's any like drama that they're okay. hiding. I don't think there's a situation where like there is some sort of, you know, spicy, juicy tidbit where Ryan Johansson, when he got the trade call, basically told Danny Breer to go fuck himself. Like, I don't think that's a thing. <laughs> I just awesome think now. that they, they don't believe he fits with the culture they're trying to build, and they'd rather him not even step foot in the room. All right. All right, all right Charlie, let's ask a fun one here. So before the game started, we did read your tweet about the 2000s night down in Florida, and we honestly did feel a little bit old. But what does a 2000s night look like, and what was your favorite part about it, Charlie? They it really wasn't much of anything. They okay. just play a lot of 2000s music. <laughs> uh, we had like some Justin Timberlake. I was impressed. They went with some like legitimate deep cuts from like uh, of like 2000s rock bands. Like okay. as as anyone who was a uh, a grade schooler during the height of Linkin Park's like prominence, <laughs> um, I know every single song from Hybrid Theory. And they played like one of the non singles from Hybrid Theory, Points of Authority. And I was like, holy shit, you guys really 
really went all out on this 2000s night, huh? But uh, there wasn't a ton of like people dressed up in 2000s garb. I don't even know what that would really be, to be honest know. with you. Just this how I like dress 80s. now. <laughs> that is fair. It's kind of just how you dress now. <laughs> but um, it was mostly just a lot of music that I personally enjoy because it was the music I liked when I was between the ages of 13 and 20. So that was cool. It was cool to be in the arena here and a lot of songs I liked. I really appreciate a team that missed the playoffs every year from 2000, 2001, from 2000 to 2010, 11, celebrating the 2000s. That's a lot of fun. Charlie, what else is a lot of fun? It's your three stars. Let's get to it tonight with star number three. Star number three, I will go with one Ryan Haley. Really good uh, shift where he scores that, uh, scores that goal. I thought that turned the game because they played – the, the skaters did not play that well in the first period. Florida was very clearly the better team. And you're wondering, is this just going to be a game where Florida's going to dominate? Ten seconds into the second period, the Flyers are up one nothing because Ryan Paling just, like, turns the afterburners on and leaves everyone in the dust. That was a huge play, not just because it was a goal, but because it showed the team, hey, we can play with these guys. We're not outmatched. The rest of the game they played, they hung right with them. They skated with them stride for stride. In addition, it wasn't just that play. Paling was good the whole game. The, his line was good the whole game. They did exactly what John Tortorella, want, John Tortorella wants them to do. And for that reason, he's my third star. Let's go to star number two. Star number two will be your game-winning goal scorer, Garnet Hathaway. Uh, again, solid game for him. He did what he usually does, which is be physical, piss off the other team, you know, get to the dirty areas and, you know, forecheck the hell out of uh, every shift he's on. He played his game for what, you know, however many minutes he had, but for the first 59 minutes and 30 or so seconds, he just played his game and it was a perfectly solid Garnet Hathaway game. And then, you know, with 23.1 seconds remaining, I believe he goes out and scores the game winning goal and delivers the Flyers one of their most dramatic victories of the season, if not their most dramatic victory of the season. Garnet Hathaway is just a fun player to watch, man. And he uh, he's my second star of this game. He certainly is. And let's finish it off with the first star. My first star of this game is Sam Harrison. I thought he was the best player on the ice for the Flyers. This Florida team plays fast. They have a ton of firepower. They are an exciting hockey team. And if you're going to hold them to one goal, you need your goalie to have played a really freaking good game. And Sam Harrison, especially in the first half of this game, he had that monster save on the power play. He had that breakaway stop on, I believe it was Reinhardt in the, in the first period. He was just sharp. And as we talked about, you know, about 10, 15 minutes ago, you're just coming to expect it from Sam Harrison. Like, is he going to be perfect every night? No, he's going to have down nights. He's had down nights over the last few weeks. He didn't play that well in the stadium series game. He's had a couple other games where you're like, yeah, not his best. But for the most part, he gives this team a chance to win pretty much every night. And sometimes, like tonight, he does better than that. He legitimately carries them to wins. I thought he was the Flyers' best player in this game. I think he's been the Flyers' best player for a lot of games over the last couple of months. And I think he's going to need to continue to be a really good player for this team because they did just lose their entire second pair. They're going to be giving up a lot of shots and chances. Like Adam Jenning and Ronnie Adder are going to make mistakes. Yeager Zamula is going to keep making mistakes. Mark Stahl isn't going to miraculously become 27 again. He's going to get beat because he's slow and he's old. That's going to happen. And you know when that happens? Sam Harris is going to have to be the guy who shuts the door and who has to be the guy who's going to have to bail those guys out. Tonight, he did that more than enough. He's going to have to keep doing it. But for tonight, he is absolutely my first star. I couldn't agree more, Chuck. And that's the last six games. He's given up more than two just once. He's been really good, I think, lately. I don't think the numbers tell the whole story. Uh, I will talk to you at some point tomorrow, uh, whether it's we're texting or you're, I don't think you're actually going to be on the show because of all the, uh, you know, all the issues with doing remote stuff, but we're going to be live at the Chegg and you're going to be down there in Florida for the trade deadline. We'll speak at some point, but uh, go have a few Coors Lights for me, my friend, and get ready for Danny B to be a buyer tomorrow. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> that is right. the Philadelphia's number one hockey beat reporter. It's the great... Charlie O'Connor, and I told him to go have a Coors Lights. Uh, go have a Coors Light. I have been enjoying one throughout this show. Listen, man, this team, they're not driving me nuts tonight. 
They're firing me up. And when you're as fired up as I was to start the show, you saw me almost spill. I mean, I spilled beer all over my <laughs> laptop. This place is going to reek like Coors Light. Sometimes you just got to take a step back and chill. And when you choose to chill, the best way to do it, it's with an ice cold Coors Light. So whether you're freaking out about the biggest win of the season, whether you're freaking out about the trade deadline, let's go buy, let's make these playoffs. Whether you're freaking out about the standings, you need to find the Blue Mountains in your fridge and enjoy a beer as cold as the Rockies because when everything surrounding your favorite hockey team is absolutely freaking awesome, sometimes you just got to step back and chill. When you choose to rise, rise above it all, choose chill, choose Coors Light. Get Coors Light delivered straight to your door with Instacart by going to CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y hockey. That's CoorsLight.com slash P-H-L-Y-H-O-C-K-E-Y. Celebrate responsibly. Coors Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. That's I am jealous of uh, I am jealous of Sean Walker in one regard. Um he gets to go right to the source, man. <laughs> <laughs> He's tapping the Rockies himself. Do they still say tap the Rockies? Is this, that's uh, They're all about chill now, but tap the Rockies is what I grew up with, and he's going to get to do it. Also, uh, a little birdie. You were on DNVR, sir? Yeah, I was on DNVR earlier to today DNVR. Uh, for, their, for their live show. Um, that was a lot of fun. It's always a great time talking to those guys. Oh, yeah. uh, Denver's like my favorite city to, to travel to. Me I've too. been there a bunch of times. It's I freaking... Fun. I absolutely freaking love it there. They've been my West Coast team for, I mean, growing up, or my Western Conference team uh, for gotcha. years. Like, Because growing up, it was them and the Red Wings. And I fucking hated the Red Wings because they beat the Flyers. Good so boy. I was like, all right, let's go Avs. Like, Patrick Wah, man, he fights all the time. This is great. Forsberg should be a flyer. Uh, like, you know, <laughs> so I always dug them and uh, Sean Walker gets to go there. Um, I know we have like the whole trade deadline show tomorrow and you should join us yeah. at the Chegg. Uh, I'm not supposed to do that yet, so I won't. But it's going to be tomorrow, two to four. We're going to be live. Marlton, New Jersey. It's going to be a great time. But yeah, uh, like I'm so tomorrow I'll be back in trade deadline mode. I'm just like celebrating right now, man. I feel I good about the hockey team for the first. I mean, it's been a fun year and it's been like you said, sure. to start the show when I laughed and spit the Coors Light <laughs> everywhere. Um, like the expectations coming in were so low and the last couple of years have been such shit. Seriously. Like I I've said it last season, March, I just stopped doing post games. I was like, fuck it. This is a waste of everyone's time. Like they'd be playing. I'm sitting there watching it. And my wife's like, are, are we really doing this? It's like it's sort of my job. I guess I have to. And then post game would come. I was like, I I got nothing. They stink. The end. Like, what am I gonna? How am I gonna fill an hour? They stink. Yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. And now, like, I could not wait to start tonight's post game. I was freaking excited when Hathaway scores that goal. We all popped for that. Right. Like that. This is the biggest win of the season, and they just keep proving everyone wrong. I don't have expert analysis. I'm glad we can have Charlie in to kind of ground us and <laughs> tell us what really happened. I don't care. <laughs> I care about the vibes right now because this team has been Literally. running off of two middle fingers all year, <laughs> telling everyone from their own management who's like, yeah, we're rebuilding. Going to sell Sean Walker. Might trade some other guys. Ryan Johansson. Yeah, we don't even want him. Yeah, we don't even want him at half the price. We're going to send him to the Phantoms, you know? Like, they have been running off of that. And what is more Philly than just saying, fuck you, actually, we're good. Like, that's <laughs> awesome. And that's what they've been doing all... There's 18 games left. There's no reason to doubt them at this point. Yep, that is true. And another point, too, is... You know, the whole, like, fire way. I know for us, some fans, especially the ones that were fatigued over the past couple of years, when they hear that, they're like, oh, I don't want to hear the fire way. But, ladies and gentlemen, this Flyers team, they are playing good hockey, but they are still doing it the Flyers way. And one good one good example about that, the Nick Sealer signing. I don't know if anyone has heard the Nick Sealer press conference from Danny Breer after the signing or the extension, I should say, but talking about re-signing him, the little things that he does. He plays in the flyer way. And what does Danny Breer do? Pay him for that by giving him a solid contract. We were talking about how a Nick Sealer you could find anywhere. Yes, Bill, we can find a Nick Sealer anywhere. But we did. <laughs> we found it. We found, they already found it. We found him. But also, too, what would Mr. Snyder do back in his day for a player like Nick Sealer? And that's absolutely. And listen, I have had plenty of instances where I have criticized the Ed Snyder because 
he had the best of intentions, and that's why to this day, even though in my lifetime they didn't win, they went to two <laughs> cup finals and they went two and eight in those games. You know, like there's still uh, you reward guys for being fucking flyers, and, and that's, that's and happened. we haven't had a chance to talk. You you weren't on the uh, our emergency pod yesterday when you saw that they extended him. What did you think of uh, the Nick Sealer contract? The next year contract, I mean, I, I kind of figured it was bound to happen because we said, like, either Walker gets traded or Sealer gets traded, and then the person who stays is going to get that contract extension. So once we found out, I figured it would be Walker just because Walker had a little bit more value because you do a little bit more. But once we found that out, kind of was just waiting for the Nick Sealer extension. And when I saw the number, I liked that at the AAV that they signed to. Four years, like 2.7 mil. Like, I thought that was really good for the player that he was. And again, rewarding a player who has given it his all. I mean, he's really improved his game since arriving to Philadelphia, and this year was just a culmination of it all. But no, it's it's great what we're doing right now. We are obviously building that culture, and you're seeing it on a night-to-night basis. But, you know, Edge Slater did a lot of good things, and rewarding players for stuff like this was part of the Edge Slater way. And I think as we move forward, yes, we have to stay in pack with modern hockey, what the whole rest league is doing, but we don't have to steer away for being the Philadelphia Flyers. And you look at, I think the Florida Panthers are a perfect example. Exactly. They have high end talent. Yeah. They play fast, but they're mean as shit. And that's why they're the top team in the league. And what the Flyers showed tonight is like I said earlier, stylistically, they're different. And when Charlie said, I don't think it's even a great matchup. Like, I don't think it is either. The way this first period went, it was like, Ooh, this is going to be tough sledding, man. And it was a tough ass game. But when you can match their attitude, you realize, like, things – there's plenty of of uh, Florida Panthers. I always want to say Carolina Panthers. There's <laughs> plenty of Florida Panthers games that become shit shows, and that's their thing. We're going to beat you or we're going to beat you up. They're very broad street bullies in yeah. that way. And you realize it didn't get out of hand tonight, and you know why? Because the Flyers will stand up to them, and they did. They will put out that line. You called it the third line, and it is. But it's also their first line right now, Seriously, you know, like it's somewhere, playing. it's somewhere in there and they will put out Nick Delorier and listen in, in the perfect world is Nick Delorier in this lineup. I mean, maybe if you have a really good two other fourth liners and he's just kind of, okay, if anything happens, I'll punch somebody, but probably not in a playoff series. You don't want him out there, but they have that attitude that they can match you. And it's, I just saw the comment that uh, yeah, there it is from go flyers. They're playing more the flyers way than any team in years. I think they are. I think this is going to be a process. And I think the Nick Sealer re signing is kind of an indication that, yeah, we're overachieving this year, but this does not mean we think we're ahead of schedule. And there's probably more tough times coming. Like when you look at right now the amount of money they have dedicated to dudes not playing, Mm -hmm. it's like, well, what happens if they make another trade or two? Like (laughs) there's only so many roster spots, there's only so much money, you know? Like, and I think when you look at a culture setter like Nick Sealer, it's we think there are still going to be tough times ahead, even though this year they've exceeded all expectations. We need a dude in the room like him. Yeah. And he helps us win. For I sure. know a lot of people out there are like, well, he's like a six or seven on a good team. I thought that coming into the year. Right now, he's a number four, number five defenseman on a team that's probably going to the playoffs. So, like... He's improved. No, he's yeah, like he's a better game. player than we all thought. And we just have to maybe 2.7 is a little much. Maybe four years is a little much. I can live with this. And I was on, I wanted to trade him. Still don't know if it's the best idea to extend him. But when you look at this team on the ice, and I know he wasn't out there tonight, but the culture they're building might actually mean something. But look what Charlie just said about Ryan Johansson. Like, it, it, listen, it's all speculation, but it could be the fact that he's not going to stay here is just because the culture's good. You don't want to add into that. And a Nick Sealer is part of that good culture, so we definitely did reward him. And also, by the way, there's, you know, once that Matt A. Michkoff is hopping off those jet skis in Dubai and comes over here, we got ourselves some player there as well. And we are we are in a celebratory mood tonight. I want you to celebrate with me. By going to FOCO, because FOCO has the absolute best officially licensed gear for all sports and fandoms. Flyers fandoms. Get Flyers stuff from FOGO, baby. Because whether it's hoodies, jackets, beachwear, or even overalls, there's something for fans for almost every occasion. 
And if you're in the uh, market for maybe some accessories, toys, or collectibles for your man cave, she shed, or podcast set, they've got you covered there. You've got to use FOCO for all your team gear needs. FOCO always has our back for Philly sports, and they have yours too. Get the best gear around by using the link in the description of the show. For all non-presale items, use the promo code PHLY10 for 10% off. PHLY10 for 10% off at FOCO today. Go there. Buy Philly hockey stuff. For me and for this team, support the fly. Like, man, if there's More ever orange and black, black it, and Philly, please. it's bring orange and black back, man. Make it cool again to be a Flyers fan because they're giving us reason to. They are. I, I know. Even if you are staunchly against the plan, you're like, no, they need to just sell everyone. TK needed to go. There's no reason for Lawton still to be here. They should probably buy out Coots. Whatever your thought process is, if you could be staunchly against the plan, still. You got to be having a little fun right now. I am deep down. I am deep down. Even the the haterist of the haters, the player haters ball of Flyers fans, have to be. They they won't tell you on Twitter because they got to keep up appearances, man. And when they you know collapse in the last five games or they get swept and whatever bad thing happens to them, because bad shit always happens. Bad things happen in Philadelphia. We know <laughs> they want to be able to throw it in our faces. But right now. They even got to acknowledge this is a lot of fun. This is a lot of fun. And real quick, I just want to defend my man Bill here because both hosts say, look, we all criticize the next deal because the yeah. reports were, what was like four to five AAV? He wanted four, four and a half. Nobody <laughs> wanted to do that. But at 2.7 AAV, yeah. we will do that. And we've been on record for that as well. But yes, we are, we're all happy. We're all excited. This is a fun Flyers team. I'm excited where we go from here, man. But it, this this has been put a big smile on our face because, especially in Philadelphia, we need our winter sports. And the basketball team, not doing so well right now. <laughs> and as I have said many times, I have no journalistic integrity. I am a hypocrite, as is every sports fan on the planet. <laughs> if you're not a hypocrite, you're not doing sports right. All right, before we get out of here, I got to tell you about the live show. It's finally Tomorrow, I'm so trade excited. deadline. The trade deadline is tomorrow at 3 p.m. and we are going to be live from the chicken or the egg, the Chegg in Marlton, New Jersey, from two to four. A two-hour live show where we're breaking down all the Flyers moves, all the moves around the NHL. Uh, if nothing happens tomorrow, because everything happened between. Yesterday and before we go live tomorrow, uh, I told Kelly we're going to turn this into an episode of Hot Ones. And I'll just like, they have a wing sauce at the Chegg uh, all the way up on their wing a meter that's called Ludicrous. We'll do it. And I want to eat one of those wings and then be like, well, the Oilers traded a conditional fourth round and see if I can do that. And well, I think that's what Hot Ones is about. You just yes. eat spicy shit and, we'll and then talk. try to like be normal. Yeah. I think that's what that based on the commercials, we'll try that's to be what normal, it is. As so much that's, as possible. That's what I think we're going to turn the show into if the trade deadline at day actually sucks. But, but another positive. Join us at the Chegg. But another positive will be as well, if the Flyers don't do anything, the Penguins Devils may be looking like they're blowing it up. So we'll be enjoying <laughs> that as well from the Chegg. Maybe we... It would be awesome if the Flyers trade for a penguin or a devil. Like, <laughs> oh, you thought you 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 went out and got Eric Carlson, the Devils. You beat the Rangers last year. You really <laughs> thought you were going to win the cup. You were one of the East favorites. Now nah, the rebuilding Flyers are ahead of you, and they're going to the playoffs. About the I am fucking pumped, and I hope every Flyers fan is feeling the way I am right now. Thank you all for joining. Thank you for hanging out. If you haven't already, you got to hit that subscribe button. Follow us right here on the YouTube page. Set those reminders. Make sure if you can't be in Marlton at the Chegg tomorrow, you're right here from 2 to 4. Take a break from the Wet Chaos stream. Those guys are killing it with a 24-hour show. Oh but God. for just two hours, you can join us at PHLY Flyers for our trade deadline show. And uh, what? Twitter at PHLY underscore Flyers. Wherever there are podcasts, PHLY Flyers. The I've said thing. the name of us like 100 times now that'll do it for me now uh my name is bill Matz for jp zapata and charlie o'connor have a great trade deadline philly see you guys we all silly like the mayor 